Humanity has used tools to rise out of the food chain, but it hasn't freed us from suffering. Humanity's struggles now, apart from ourselves, are of the mind. But just as humanity used tools to fight off physical dangers, we again use tools to fight off psychological dangers. Those tools are the arts. Music, writing, paintings, poetry, dance. These things are weapons to combat the fear of oblivion which taunts us. The pain of harsh realities. The pain of our past. For as long as we can trace back our history, we find art. A guiding light through the darkness and the void. Emotions are fireflies, and art is a glass jar. We capture those fireflies and set them free in our times of darkness so that they may light the way. Bound, developed by Plastic Studios and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment and Santa Monica Studios, depicts this idea that art and expression can be used to conquer the darkness. A weapon to defeat our demons. A tool to save ourselves. Bound does this by using a form of art as the character's defense. Instead of a gun or a sword, it is dance that protects the player from the dangers in this abstract world. When dancing, the character is shielded by a force impenetrable by the shouts of monsters and the sharp points of paper airplanes. It is her form of expression that saves her from doom and carries her to her destinations. Those dark forces, they are painful memories of her past. Those destinations, overcoming those memories and laying to rest the painful thoughts and feelings they create. To me, Bound is a piece of art that is a love letter to art itself. A thank you note for what it does for us all. It does this by telling the story of an individual wrestling with her past and showing how she, in her mind, struggles to defeat that past. To let that past go and move on with her life. This world of cubes and flowing ribbons is representative of the struggles in her mind that have plagued her since childhood. And although it is dance that protects her in this abstract world, in the real world scene in other parts of the game, it seems to be drawing which allowed her to express herself. Perhaps she also used dance in the real world to express herself, or dreamt of being a dancer as a child. But that seems to be up for interpretation. What we do know of the real world is what we see in the woman's childhood journal as she walks along the beach. Old images drawn in crayon which depict the foes we face in the abstract game world. Foes she faced and still faces in her mind. Images which capture the pain felt long ago. Fireflies, which were once captured to later be set free in a time of darkness. These images in the world in her mind that they capture depict a kingdom in ruin, a queen warning of a monster destroying that kingdom. They are the expressions of a young girl whose world was being torn apart by the collapse of her parents' relationship. They are the windows into her childhood mind, and now, many years later, we see her looking back through those windows in order to finally put an end to the captivity that those memories have kept her in. This heartbreaking yet uplifting tale is slowly unraveled throughout the game which consists of three reoccurring sections. Those sections are the abstract world which we spend most of our time in, the real world segments on the beach, and the fragmented memories which become the driving force of the game's narrative. And if the fragmented memories are the driving force of the narrative, it is the abstract world which unfurls the game's emotions. It is here that the player has the most freedom to move around and express oneself. Whereas the memories are jagged and still, the world of the mind and thoughts is forever changing. It is constantly flowing and growing. Like the mind of a person searching themselves to find answers, the waves of cubes recede to reveal new pathways. Paths which will lead to new insight and new self-discoveries. At times this world is bright and the player has room to move and dance. Other times the world is caught in storm and the pathways are filled with patches which slow the player down. 
This world design reflects each little thought process she experiences while looking back on her childhood, or had as a child. Perhaps each little patch of grass which slows the player down is a question in her mind. A small, unanswerable why, in a mind riddled with questions both big and small. Each thin beam walked over is a harsh reality navigated by a fragile mind. Just as paths can slow you down and take you downward and bound, strands of ribbon like strands of thought can lift one up to new heights and long flowing paths can allow one to glide on air like the freedom of revelation. The design of bound, however, is such that there are multiple paths to each destination, just as there is no one path in the mind to any one conclusion. The abstract world of bound is a beautiful representation of the mind and thought processes, of searching, learning, and moving forward. This game's concept is refreshing, unique, and profound, but it is also just executed wonderfully. This is due in large part to the game's creative director, Mikhail Staniszewski. But all the different people from different art forms who worked on the game fit together like pieces of a puzzle. The music in Bound creates atmospheres which reflect the journey through the mind in quite the same way as the world design. Like the abstract world, the music is forever flowing and changing. Its spacey sound fits with the open expanse of cubes which spread out over the horizon. To sum it up, it's contemplative. It welcomes thought and allows the mind to wander. That is until, like the world design itself, it changes to reflect those darker moments. When thoughts are starting to slip, an organ joins in with the more contemplative openness of the synth. When the mind has completely slipped into darkness and all is lost, the organ howls. And when we find ourselves back in the real world, music is simpler, less out there, less abstract. The composer Oleg Olm Spadekum, also known as Hanali, if I'm pronouncing those correctly, seems to have been the exact puzzle piece needed to complete Bound's wonderful image. The game also brings in ballerina and contemporary dancer Maria Udod and choreographer Mikhail Adam Goral to capture the dancer's powerful and expressive movements. And again, I might be mispronouncing those names, I'm sorry if I butchered them. Now admittedly, I don't know much about ballet or contemporary dance, so I can't speak towards its implementation like I can other parts of the game. But as a human being with feelings, I can say that I found myself just dancing around in a small area appreciating the beautiful movements of the character. I feel as though they capture the expressive power, yet fear, of someone doing all they can to navigate the thoughts plaguing their mind. All of these puzzle pieces from the world of music, dance, game design, storytelling, come together to form what I again believe is a beautiful love letter to art itself, a collection of different art studies which all point to why expression is so powerful why we, as humans, need to express ourselves and how expression can save us. Whether it's from the pain of a breakup, the fear of that which lies ahead, or the painful memories of our past, art can act as our defense. It can be our pathway to recovery and peace. It can be the thing which gives us any meaning at all. It is a tool which we humans have discovered to capture everything we feel so that others may also understand. A glass jar to capture fireflies, which make us who we are, but not what we're beholden to. Fireflies, which are our freedom, but also our mark on the world. Capture those fireflies, gather your weapons, and like the humans who came before us, stare oblivion in the face and say, here I am. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe to my button, notify the likes, and comment on the bell. Thanks for watching.